All right, just for a second, think about the world around you. The building you're in right now, the sidewalk outside, that bridge you probably drove over today. Chances are it's all built with concrete. It is the foundation of our modern world. But, and this is a big but, that foundation has a pretty serious hidden cost. So let's get into it. 8%. Just let that number sink in for a moment. 8%. That's how much of the entire world CO2 emissions come from making just one thing, cement. And cement, of course, is the key ingredient in concrete. So as we build up our world, we're also racking up a massive environmental bill. And that is the huge challenge the entire construction industry is grappling with right now. So what do you do? We've got this material we absolutely can't live without. But making it is, well, it's a huge driver of climate change. How do you even begin to solve a problem that's quite literally set in stone? Well, you know, the answer might not be where you'd expect. It might not be in some high-tech lab, but out in a farmer's field. Okay, so picture this. Every single year, we produce over 700 million tons of rice globally. And for all that rice, you got something like 148 million tons of, well, waste. It's the rice husk, that tough outer shell. And usually, it's just burned in open fields, creating pollution. But... What if it wasn't waste? What if it was actually a resource? And that brings us to this, rice husk ash, or RHA for short. And yet, it's exactly what you think it is. It's the ash that's left over when you burn all those rice husks. For the longest time, this stuff was just a massive disposal headache. But now, it turns out it's actually a super valuable resource, just hiding in plain sight. So how do you turn this, you know, agricultural nuisance into a high-tech material? It's actually pretty straightforward. You take the husks and you burn them. But, and this is the really important part, you have to do it just right. It's a controlled burn, keeping the temperature under 800 degrees Celsius. If you do that, you don't just get plain old ash. Nope, you create something with some seriously amazing chemical properties. Okay, so what's the secret sauce here? What's this superpower we're talking about? Well, it all boils down to one simple molecule, a molecule that rice plants, for whatever reason, are just incredible at sucking up from the soil and packing into their husks. When you look at what RHA is actually made of, it's kind of shocking how much of it is just one thing. Over 85% of it is something called amorphous silica. Now, this isn't just regular old silica like you'd find in sand. It's a super reactive, non-crystalline form. And in the world of concrete chemistry, let me tell you, that stuff is basically gold. This high silica content is what makes RHA a pozzolanic material. I know, it's a mouthful, sounds super technical, but the idea is actually pretty simple. When you mix it into concrete, it does two amazing things. First, its particles are so tiny, they act like a microfiller, literally packing into all the tiny gaps and making the concrete denser. But then it also kicks off a chemical reaction that creates more of the good stuff, the glue basically, that holds concrete together. It's called CSH gel. So RHA is doing double duty. It's a physical filler and a chemical booster. All right, so the science sounds great on paper, right? But what happens when you actually put this stuff to the test in the real world? Well, the results are pretty darn compelling, but there is one little catch we need to talk about. Okay, so here's the trade-off. The RHA particles aren't just super fine, they're also really porous. You can basically think of them as billions of tiny microscopic sponges. And what do sponges do? They soak up water. So when you first mix the concrete, the RHA demands more water, which can make the whole mix thicker and kind of harder to pour. Engineers call this reduced workability. Now, it's totally solvable with some additives, but it's the main thing you have to account for. But for dealing with that little workability issue, look at the payoff. When you swap out about 15% of the cement for RHA, the concrete, once it's cured and hardened, is actually stronger than the standard stuff. That chemical reaction and the microfilling effect we talked about, it really works. It creates a tougher, denser material that can take more punishment. And it's not just about raw strength either. The really big deal might be durability. Think about something like chloride resistance, which is basically a fancy way of saying how well the concrete can stop things like road salt from seeping in and rusting the steel rebar inside. And the difference here is, well, it's night and day. Concrete made with RHA is way, way less permeable. This means our buildings and bridges could last so much longer. And look, this isn't just some crazy idea from a small lab. The potential here is huge. To quote a recent study in the journal Sustainability, RHA has the potential to replace cement by up to 10 to 20% without compromising the concrete performance. I mean, that's a direct quote from the research. 
We can swap out a huge chunk of a carbon-heavy material for farm waste and actually get a better product. Okay, so let's step back and look at the big picture here. This brings everything full circle, doesn't it? We started with two giant problems, a huge source of CO2 emissions from cement and a giant pile of agricultural waste. And this one solution, RHA, connects them in this beautiful, elegant loop. I mean, think about the advantages. You're cutting CO2 emissions every time you use it. You're taking a massive global waste problem and turning it into something valuable. You're literally building stronger, more durable structures that will last longer. And at the end of the day, you're creating a perfect example of a circular economy, where waste from one system becomes the feedstock for another. You just can't argue with it. It's a true win-win. This isn't about making concrete just a little bit less bad for the environment. No, this is about taking something we consider waste and using it to make our most important building material fundamentally better. It's just an amazing example of sustainable innovation in action. So that kind of leaves us with one big final thought, right? If a solution this elegant and powerful was hiding in something as common as a rice husk, it just makes you wonder, doesn't it? What other incredible solutions are out there waiting to be found, hiding in the things we throw away every single day?